<laughs> it's okay, thank you. All right, so this is where I get a little bit. Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Sandy, and I have with me a special guest. His name is Corbin. And I have some things that I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight. Pretty excited being the pre, I'm just trying to pull it up on my phone. You guys know how I am. Um, trying to pull this up on my phone to make sure that I could see if anyone's talking to us. So I can answer any questions. Um, maybe Corbin can help us out with um, this. Pull this up on my phone to make sure that I can see. All right, there. I'm not listening to myself talk. So I want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm Dr. Sandy, and you're on with Nurse Talk with Dr. Sandy. I have on with me. I have Mr. Corbin Cox and. I am so excited to be able to unveil this right before Independence Day because this is something that I've been doing a lot of this and, you know, in the background trying to get this thing going and um, I'm super thrilled and uh, well, how about if I let Corbin talk a little bit about it. Um, this is what I am offering to nurses, our participants with Nurses Against Violence to be completely independent from your insurance programs. So Corbin, I'd like you to give me a brief synapse of what we have that's affordable for nurses and all of those that help us with our jobs in the front line. What do we have available to us? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to all the nurses within an organization, we're going to have access to nationwide PPO plans. Um, with that, you're going to have access to major medical, catastrophic coverage, accident coverage. Um, you know, if I didn't say major medical already, you're going to have wellness benefits, as well as uh, telehealth with access to mental health services as well. Um, it's really going to give you the opportunity to free yourself from the constraints of facilities that may hold, you know, health insurance over your head. You're going to have that freedom to, you know, choose your plan and fully customize your plan. You know, my job is to help you and build the plan, whether it's a traditional health insurance plan or something not so traditional, you know, build something that's really specific to your needs. Um, it's going to be really, really great. I'm looking forward to helping everybody, talking with everybody and getting everybody started in health coverage that is going to really, you know, work for you and give you the freedom, um, you know, kind of to go wherever you want in terms of the facilities that you work, hospitals that you work and not be constrained due to uh, health insurance. Yeah. And that's huge because I know like, you know, and I, I do a little bit, you know, I go from job to job and it's like your insurance starts and then it stops. And it's like, it'll be really nice to be able to have it in one spot. And we have this program that um, that you were telling me about. I was pretty excited that you know something that kind of sparked this conversation in reference to mental health care. Um, I would love for nurses to have a third party to be able to talk to. That's not necessarily myself. I love talking to our members, uh, but to have another person that you know, they can talk to you on an ongoing basis. Um, so, but you have that access for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, talking with everyone individually and really getting set up on a plan that's going to work for them and really explain the benefits of the mental health side, um, as well as the tr uh, traditional health insurance side of things. Um, it's going to be really great. Awesome. And I want to thank you very much for coming on. Um, so I know that this is a little bit, there's not a lot of people that are watching, but we get a lot of people like I post this on our podcast, I post this in YouTube. So we get a lot of people that are looking. So it, within Nurses Against Violence, we have over 30,000 people that are continuously talking about what we do and what we have to offer. So anything is, you know, sky's the limit as far as how many people that we could help. Um, I also want to mention our nursesagainstviolence.org, our website has been revamped. So I would like to take you guys to take a look at it. I'll put it in the chat when we get done. Um, you can find under member benefits, you'll find Mr. Corbin Cox. You'll see a video on there for Together Wellness, and that is our little plan name. And you can ask for a free you know, consultation with him to be able to have a conversation to see what could work for you. There's no obligation. There's no 
nobody's trying to sell you anything. I, we don't, you know, see anything from this. This is for you. And this is very important um, because our mental health is not so good um, as far as nurses on the front line, especially those that are working with the COVID patients and even those that are supporting them. Um, so, and even before COVID, it was really bad. And, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, something that was pretty serious that came across my desk. A lawyer sent me a case. And if you're not watching, let people know, hey, come on, you need to listen to what's going on because this is the new wave of what's going on in healthcare. All right, so let everybody know if anyone's in the chat, have somebody, come, have people come on, let them know for me. Um, okay, so this is actually a court case. I cannot give any names, um, but this is the wave of what it, what is happening in, uh, in healthcare. And this is, I'm proud to say, um, that we have been doing this since 2017 and we will not stop to help get nurses their justice and those that help us with our positions. Um, it is unfortunate and I hate hearing about these things, but you know what? If I don't hear about this, um, you know, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it to as many people as I can. And I know I'll have a pretty large stage on here. Um, okay, so the person, you might've seen an article that I've put into Nurses Against Violence in reference to Dr. A. She was a resident over at Pennsylvania. Um, it was a um, healthcare system over there. This incident happened on uh, February 23rd of this year. Of this, of this year. And this is a resident, somebody that, you know, goes around with the doctors and I'm sure everybody's familiar with who residents are. So I'm gonna read pretty much verbatim for this part. Um, the defendant or the person, the perpetrator changed this resident's life. And this is what happened. He is a 35 year old male and he was able to acquire a lunch tray metal knife and a sharp pen. And he stabbed Dr. A multiple times in the eyes, neck, uh, shoulders, arms, and hands. While she was a medical student, nurses and other hospital employees watched and screamed in horror. Now, if you have children, I apologize. They should, this is a grown up show. I would hope that you know, nobody is listening to this that's underage. We have, what we have here is a fundamental problem in security. And the reason why I'm talking about this case that is across my desk right now and looking right at it is because we have, well, it's not just because it's a resident, this has happened to nurses. This has happened to CNAs. This has happened to everybody that's been on here that, that helps us with our jobs, people that are watching us, that are trying to figure out how to help nurses like Corbin, like with his insurance program that he has for us. This, so nurses and other hospital employees were also traumatized by even seeing this horror of what happened to Dr. A, which was a medical resident. The attack began in the patient's room with the perpetrator running towards Dr. A before spilling out onto the hallway in front of the nurse's station. In the middle of the vicious attack, the assailant turned to the face and nursing staff, wielding his knife and pen, prompting the staff to retreat and lock themselves into a room. This left Dr. A already beaten and bloodied up, alone in the hallway, unable to escape. Not wasting any wasting the opportunity, Miss uh, the perpetrator turned and attacked Dr. A again, stabbing Dr. A and slammed her head into the floor over and over again until uh, finally, somebody, uh, part of the hospital staff was able to pull him off of her and she was able to break free and go into the room with the other nurses that were trying to keep themselves safe. So. The reason why this case, I am, I am mortified by this case, but this is what's happening and what we talk about on a daily, every time we're on here. Patient attacks happen all the time. They're not talked about. When you have this combined with COVID, COVID 
has drained nurses and frontline healthcare staff so completely beyond measure. And then you, we also have had this problem of underreporting and not talking about the problems of the floor. So when Corbin approached me with this insurance program and this, um, this minimal program that he has even to help with mental health care, I was absolutely excited about it. Of course, I've put him through the ringer and I've tested him a little bit just because I have to make sure whoever I put my nurses in front of, my healthcare workers, that, that they're gonna get taken care of. Um, so as a direct result of the attack in, in the Pennsylvania hospital and a security team's inability to prevent and timely respond to the violent attacks, Dr. A now suffers severe emotional, mental, and physical trauma, including PTSD, flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety, and personal difficulties that impacts her on a daily basis. He stabbed her in the eyes. She has a newborn baby. Can you get even more disgusting than to do that to somebody? Mental illness and anger is out there, guys. Nurses are not prepared. This, this resident hit this perpetrator in the groin. It didn't do anything. It is the duty, regardless if it's a recommendation from OSHA or not, it is the duty of your employer to make sure that you are safe and free from harm like this. It is not a part of the job ever at all. So this case is an example of a wave of what's happening in, in healthcare because, which I'm very happy that we were able, from what the lawyer said, they pulled a lot of information from my research as well as also as watched and seen what has been going on that you guys have been posting in the group and also on the main page. So thank you very much. You're helping this case, as well as also your neighbor's case that might not, that is your friend that's on the floor that just got attacked by Mr. Smith. I always use Mr. Smith. Um, so, you know, that they were supposed to be warning others that, you know, of proper interventions. They have programs that are like completely like not foolproof. Like you'll be going to do a move and you'll forget how to do it. And it's a code that's called. And then the facility will, will write you up. And even if you even go like that back to the patient, the facility has you on camera and they say, oh, well, she was trying to, or he was trying to attack a patient. So that sets you up for board of nursing issues as well as also you could lose your license and be charged with assault. So you will never have a career. So if a facility doesn't, and again, I am I'm all for uplifting and, and making facilities. I want things to work right for facilities. I want, we, they need us. Facilities need nurses. Nurses have ownership in what they do. Healthcare, frontline healthcare workers have ownership in everything that they do. They take accountability. And if they didn't like where they worked or what they did, they would stay silent sometimes, or just completely afraid of what will happen to them if they speak up. And that's documented over and over again. Um, so, and they're highlighting, and I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but at all relevant times, Pennsylvania Hospital owed a duty of care, protection, security, and candor to the medical residents on its campus and within its walls. So just because, and the medical resident is very important, but this is all healthcare. This is every nurse, every CNA, every resident, every doctor and nurse practitioner that works in the hospital. Now, poor Corbin, he's listening to me and I'm sure he's like, no wonder, no wonder Dr. Rizaldi wanted me to come on because you don't want people to know about your mental health care. That is what we're trying to promote here. We're trying to get you some care that if you need to talk to somebody without retaliation or your medical records going over to your employer, which is against all laws, but for some reason, things like that happen when you go to EAP 
you have to be very careful. Um, and plus you don't want to have all of the stuff kept up here and then you accidentally make a mistake on the floor because you're thinking about what that attack happened to you. What is going on with the incivility in your workplace? Because that leads to medical errors and, and, and medication errors over and over again. And we have a healthcare system that is like litigious, right? So as we see with this, right? But this is important. If things are, if nothing, if nobody comes forward, nothing's ever going to get fixed. So here's another thing that I pulled out of here, the duty of the corporate defendants. And if you could read between the lines of what I'm trying to tell you without me telling you, the duty of corporate defendants to provide sufficiently trained available, uh, available security personnel who could timely and effectively respond to prevent or mitigate such assaults duty a duty which is corporate defendants failed to fulfill now how many of you out there that's listening to me right now and i'm not mad because i'm just loud i'm a loud italian i'm sorry i'm not sorry but how many out there can identify with this how many out there can identify with this you're welcome dave how many of you guys can identify with this issue does your employer stick up for you? Let's talk a little bit more about this case. So this case is going after a for-profit multi-billion dollar health system that they can't afford to have security that's going to protect its healthcare workers. They also have in here largely unreported due to a culture of concealment per perpetrated by a personal fear, fear of repercussions, Deficient, deficient reporting protocols, which the protocols are there, but your report might go out the wayside. That your report goes nowhere. I followed this train. E or even sheer embarrassment that the attacks continue to happen. Victims are shamed. They're ostracized by their peers. They're considered to be weak they leave because they don't get protection and then they get put under the microscope well well so you went up an inch like you were going to go after mr smith so let's go ahead and let's retaliate against you not really saying that but they do and they go to the board of nursing and have your license yanked and you have to go through anger management you have to go through all these different programs because you are not a competent nurse that can control your anger they will twist that thing on you um, as I mentioned, Dr. A just recently had a daughter with her husband that was also a doctor. Um, so we can, we can honestly say that patients of all backgrounds, doesn't matter if they're having a baby, doesn't matter if they're coming in because they need a cast put on their foot, they might have the, they might have the possibility they might have a mental health issue. It's a balance, guys. Either you could be way off the wayside or you could be in the middle and you could be completely okay either with medication or not and you're balanced, okay? There's a lot of this going on in society right now and even before COVID happened. What the problem is, and I've been on many nursing units and I'm not shaming anybody, but I want you to be cognizant of when you're working on the units, what safety pins, what staplers do you have out? You need to be careful of what you have that somebody could just pick up and hurt you with it, even their shoes, right? So what do you do, right? So these are things I provoke thought and I can always talk to you offline about this as well. Um, so I wanna go back to this. Um, So as um, so when she was getting ready to um, during the examination upon uh, the defend, um, the perpetrator hearing that from Dr. A that he was not being discharged, he stood up prompting prompting Dr. A to retreat and noticing that she was retreating, he goes, are you scared of me? 
Uh, she responded that they were backing up to maintain the six feet social distance requirement according to the COVID guidelines. Dr. A and the medical student continued to move closer to the door, opening it, leaving a jar to open onlookers, you know, for onlookers to be able to, you know, so they could see what's going on. He raised his right hand lunging towards Dr. A and the medical student. There was no security notification devices or panic alert buttons um, that could help summons for help. And I know this, I, I know a lot of people out there can identify with this. Retreating into the hallway, um, with uh, Dr. A, the medical student was with her, pushing the medical student into the hallway first. So she was protecting the medical student when that was with her. Um, the medical student screamed for help to the nurse's station, which directly was across from his room. And um, he grabbed Dr. A's hair, yanking her backwards, punching her head with his fist before slamming her head into the floor multiple times. The head trauma caused Dr. A to be disoriented and bleed from her head, nose, and face, and her eyes, which were obscured her vision. Dr. A tried to escape, attempting to hit Mr. Anderson in the groin, so she didn't quite make his groin, um, and she didn't. She wasn't able to get free. Um, he began hitting and stabbing Dr. A in the face, head, neck, and arms with a metal knife and a sharp pen. Now, I know that we leave our pens all the place, you know, uh, although there's a lot of nurses that steal pens a lot, but um, it can also get in the hands of a patient as well. Approximately 10 to 15 nurses yell for Mr. Anderson to get off. Of course, were they there to get, get him off, right? Were they afraid? I would imagine they were very afraid. He turned to face the medical student and screaming nurses advancing towards them with a knife. Sounds like to me, I'm not going to get more into this. It's a security problem. This is this is an, going to be a new trend in healthcare that people are going to start to um, file charges, do civil. Um, there, it's it's going to. This is the this is the start of it. My, I feel really bad for Dr. A. I feel very bad for her family, and this shouldn't have ever have happened ever in healthcare. We take care of sick. We don't, who would ever think that we would become the sick and injured? So I want you to please, if you have questions, if you hear of anything else like this, to please reach out to me. I am available to you. I will do my best to talk with you and to help you through this. I know there's a lot of people that have been coming to me about cases, I have about three or four. Um, I cannot legally represent you unless we have, of course, you know, like I could help your lawyer, whatever. Um, but damages that she is looking for are scarring, bruising, decreased sensation in her hand from the damage, uh, concussion, amnesia, P PTSD, post-concussion post syndrome, fear, nightmares, anxiety, embarrassment, decreased concentration because she has a TBI now, um, apprehension, forgetfulness, exhaustion. And a lot of this is from the TBI, from the traumatic force and the stabbing and all of that stuff that happened to her, physical pain and suffering. What is Pennsylvania going to do? How many hospitals in Pennsylvania have the same stuff that's happened? How about in California and Florida? I got nothing else more to say, but it's time to rise up. It's time to take back nursing. It's time. There's no other time but now. We are not a union, but we will stand behind you and we will be educating and, and talking about things that are gonna help you to work with mental health patients, providing education. You know a lot of this stuff, you do. But what do you do when you don't have an employer that backs you? It's good to know your local laws. It's good to know your State Practice Act. And the Board of Nursing may or may not support you. You must have facts and you must have things to back you up. So do we have any questions or anything out there? 
So if you're wondering who this gentleman with me, Mr. Cox, I'm going to mention it one more time <laughs> because he's awesome. He's listened to me. He is, uh, he works with the healthcare professionals and um, he is, so my biggest thing is mental health care for frontline healthcare workers. So he has something that could help us. It's affordable. And I would like you just to, we're going to wrap things up, Mr. Cox. And um, I, I think I've given everybody a whole lot of, oh, can't believe she said all this. There might even be people that can't even sleep tonight because they're like, I'm doing this. I need to get older as Aldi. <laughs> fact of the matter is we have to rise up. We have to do something and we love our jobs. We love who we work with for the most part. And it's time for us to take care of each other and pull each other up. If this is, we have to. So Mr. Cox, could you just briefly re, um, reiterate a little bit more about your program? Yeah. Yeah, definitely on, you know, a lighter note of things, you know, something that's really awesome and it's really great, uh, you know, being able to be y'all's personal health advisor for healthcare. Um, you know, my goal is to fully customize plans tailored to your specific needs, get you attached to major medical catastro uh, catastrophic accident coverage as well on the mental health side. Um, we have some, um, different things in place that are really affordable and can be really great uh, in most states to really help every individual out on, on those ends. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to talk with everybody um, to build those custom plans for y'all and then really get y'all started on a healthcare plan um, so that you can you know not have that constraint to facility or hospital where you know you, they're going to hold over your head. Well, you know, your health care and all that kinds of all those kinds of things and um, be able to take your insurance wherever you go. Nationwide PPO plans, the best, the best year round. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really great. And I look forward to talking with all of y'all. This is the way to celebrate Independence Day, because I'm trying to help you guys get out of that learned helplessness box, guys. I'm trying to get you guys to be independent and to not have to worry about working for insurance. This is, this is important. He has very minimal plans and he has the high luxury plans, depending on what fits for you and what you can do. So without further, I don't know what the rest of that is, but <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we will be back Tuesday. We've got some great content. We're gonna start having case studies that I'm gonna be uh, popping on during the week and trying to help people understand a little bit more about how to work with patients that are severely mentally ill or having addiction problems. So I wanna say thanks and have a great Independence Day and be safe. Everybody take care. <laughs>